What's up my friends? One of the topics that we get all the time in the store is when do I throw this bait versus this bait? Or when do I throw this one instead of this one or vice versa, they look the same. Today, Jeff and I are taking four baits that we get asked all the time about that have very similar, let's call it competitors, Jeff, in their space. Baits that are almost the same, whether it's the same look, the same dive depth, the same action. When do you choose one over the other? Today we're gonna dive in, we're gonna talk through the baits and have some fun. Are you ready, Jeff? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, the Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We're the Hookup Tackle USA. Good morning, Jeffrey the King. Ohio to you. How are you today? I'm fantastic as always. So this was a great idea in the mind of Jeff that really, I'm surprised we haven't thought of this before, mm -hmm. but these are questions that we get asked all the time about this one or this one, right? So in my world, you know the answer to this, mm -hmm. right? All of them. Yes, right? absolutely. So literally every time I go fishing, you know, Jeff and Griff and these guys, they make fun of me for having too much stuff because I'm just, I've micro dissected all of these things now to where I don't ever want to be without all these different tools. But not everybody is going to be that ridiculous, right? Sometimes you just want to know, dude, is it this one or this one? Like what's the best one, right? So today we are going to go through four baits that we are always asked about here that have very close cousins, competitors, brothers, whatever you want to call it, from other brands that are always kind of debated about, right? This one versus that one. So let's dive in, Jeff, are you ready? Mm. Okay, let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna start with a crankbait because this is kind of a hot topic right now. OSP Blitz EXDR is probably our number one selling crankbait in this type of crankbait. It's super hot. It, for the years, has been kind of like an underground hush-hush secret that no longer is a secret, right? That, that shit's out, right? Everybody knows about this bait, everybody wants this bait, but it's a bait that has a very close competitor in the space, and that competitor is this guy. This is the Mega Bass Super Z3. Now, when I say competitor, right, both of these baits are kind of designed to dive in that four to four and a half meter dive depth. Right, so we're talking that 12 to 14 foot zone, that's where these baits are gonna go. So if you're looking to accomplish that dive depth, and I should say also that both of these baits are 53 millimeters long body, right? So the bodies are essentially the same length, the same dive depth. Why am I choosing this one over this one? Or vice versa, this one over this one, right? So let's dive into these because this has kind of been a really hot topic. So let me take them out of the package first. Make sure you guys see the pros and cons of these guys. Okay, so first things first, here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, this is the OSP Blitz EXDR on the bottom, and this is the Mega Bass Super Z3 up top. Now, when I take them out of the package, you can see that this is 53 millimeters and this is 53 millimeters. But you can also see that even though they're the same length, this one is still definitely smaller, right? So 
it definitely has a smaller presence. It's a shallower build. This is a deeper build, right? So this one definitely has a bigger, larger profile than this guy does, right? So that's the first thing you're gonna notice. Second thing, this guy, the Super Z3 is 3 eighths of an ounce. This guy is a half ounce, right? This guy has a built-in internal weight transfer system. So Mega Bass is famous and known for their uh, LBO weight transfer system, right? So it has a magnetized weight transfer. So in this cast, there is a magnetized weight that shifts to the back. So this thing casts like a rocket. And then as soon as it starts diving, it shifts forward and locks in place so that it's weighted in a way that it keels. Now, this is also silent, right? So you're not gonna have any uh, sound to it. The Blitz EXDR, you're gonna have kind of that one knock kind of real low key sound, right? Okay, so which one's better? Jeff, what's your answer? Both. Okay, this is my answer too. But why am I choosing one over the other? Now these are two amazing tools that pretty much all of us have in our arsenal. Here's essentially, and again, this is all our take, right? So we say this a lot, there's not necessarily black and white, right and wrong here. Right, so what's working for us and what I see working may not be working for you. It might be the opposite for you in your body of water, your way of fishing, right? So take what we're talking about, implement it if you can, but you know, as much as I would like to say that this is the Bible that I'm speaking here, this is just experience, right? So this is just our take. You guys take it and spin it however you need to so that you guys have success on the water. So for me, when I'm throwing a crankbait, I would say the majority of time that I'm throwing a crankbait, I want the thing kind of grinding on the bottom, right? I want it banging around and I want it to create some type of sound, right? So some guys like things really loud. Some guys like things really quiet. This is a sound that just has done a lot for me fish catch wise. I've had a lot of success with this just kind of one knocker, low pitch sound. I have a lot of confidence in it. It's giving me noise to call fish to it without being overly noisy, right? It's just that one simple rattle in there that's just shifting side to side. This is also a super easy bait to throw even though it doesn't have a weight transfer system. The way OSP builds these baits it's this honeycomb construction, so it's a thinner walled bait, and it's weighted on the bottom so that it casts in a super stable position, right? It also retrieves in a super stable position so that it maintains a great keel, but that weight down there is also designed for castability. So a lot of times when you have a crankbait and you throw it in the wind, the crankbait, because it's flat, has a tendency to kind of just coast through the wind. The idea behind having it structured weighted the way it is, is that it cuts through and it maintains a stable flight posture during cast. So even though there's no weight transfer system, this thing throws really easy. It winds really easy. It retrieves really easy. And for me, that honeycomb construction and the shape of the bait, it's kind of a semi round bait. It gives it kind of a hybrid in between a wide wobble and a tight wobble. So generally speaking, you want a wide wobble when the fish are keyed in more on crawfish or they just need something pretty aggressive and you want a tight wobble when they're more bait fish oriented right so it gives it more of a finesse approach this is kind of an in-between so with this one bait i get that hybrid tight wide i get that little bit of a sound and it's just a great starting point for me and a lot of times i'll start here and i never go away from it like I start here and I stay here. I'm catching fish, maybe I change some colors up, right? But it's just, for me, it's kind of the perfect bait for that dive depth, for that zone that I'm fishing. Now, when do I go here? Well, for me, again, this is definitely a more finesse approach for me. So A, it's a smaller profile body. B, I don't have that sound, right? So it's taking away a lot of the noise and it's taking away some of the size. So this is a guy that I will put down there when finesse is critical, maybe a little bit lighter line. Maybe I've caught a bunch on this, 
and now I can follow up with this. It's in the same zone, but it's a different look. It's a little bit more finessey. That's when I'm going here. Also, ultra, ultra clear water, right? Calm day where there's not a lot of noise, a lot of sound. Typically, I wanna finesse my approach a little bit more. So I like the idea of having a smaller profile. I like the idea of having a quieter bait that's coming through and it's just swimming, right? It's just doing its thing. It's kind of bouncing off the rocks without having this, you know, sound coming through that's just amplifying everywhere that might freak fish out. Also, when fish have just moved into a zone, they tend to be a little bit more spooky, wary, right? So fish have just come from deep water and they've moved up into that 10, 15 foot zone and they're relatively fresh in that zone. I like throwing something like this that's quieter and more finesse in approach because it's less intrusive, less likely to spook the fish, right? On the flip side, if I get out there and it's windy and there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of volume, right? This bait, the Blitz, is gonna give me that sound and that, that movement to call fish and let them find my bait even in the noisier water, right? So that's essentially how I break those two guys down. Day-to-day -day starting point, windier days when I need a little bit more volume, I go with the Blitz. When it's quiet, when it's still, when it's ultra clear and I need to be more finessey, I go with the Z3. All right, moving on, let's jump over to top water because we're kind of in top water season and this is a topic that we get asked a lot. Fortunately, top water baits are not baits that we tend to plow through, right? Like when you think of crank baits, I can't go to the lake with one crank bait, right? I gotta have a box of crank baits because if I'm fishing these things right, I'm gonna lose a few crank baits, right? They're just gonna snag, they're down there in the rocks, or the trees or whatever, we're gonna go through some. Top water baits, you know, unless we really screw it up, they tend to last like forever, right? So, you know, a lot of times guys don't wanna buy 40 different top waters. They just wanna buy one, right? Well, give me the best walking bait, right? So one that we get asked a question a lot about are these two. So you hear us talk about the Tekel Kick Knocker a lot, right? This is probably our number one walking top water bait that we throw here. Well, the bait that gets compared to it a lot is this guy. This is the Mega Bass Dog X Diamante. They have a very similar profile. They have a very similar look. They're the same length, they're the same weight, right? So why am I throwing this instead of this or vice versa? When would I throw this over my beloved kick knocker, right? So let's open them up real quick and let's talk about them. All right, so let's side by side comparison these guys, right? So here you have the Tekel kick knocker. Here you have the Mega Bass Dog X Diamante. So you can see virtually the same size bait, right? almost identical shape. They both kind of have that cigar shape to them. They're pretty much the same weight. They're both gonna be in that three quarter ounce weight there. So, what's different about them? Well, let's break it down really quick. The Tickle Kick Knocker is designed to be a very easy bait to walk side to side that creates a lot of noise. Okay, so inside the head, there are some glass beads that are gonna give kind of this high pitch sound. And then at the bottom of the bait, there is a little tungsten knocker that shifts back and forth in this little kind of inch chamber, right? So that's creating this really amazing knock. Right, so with, as this thing is moving, as we're walking this thing, that weight is shifting and sliding in there. So every time it moves, it's giving you that hollow knocking sound, right? And that knocking sound is designed to call fish to it. It's one of the best sounds. So, you know, the Super Spook really was the bait that put this kind of, you know, knocking sound on the map. This is basically borrowing from that idea. There's some other baits we're gonna talk about here in a little bit that also are kind of borrowing from that idea. So for me, this is just a great place to start when I'm not sure where the fish are gonna be. They could be on the bank, they could be suspended out in open water, they could be in some treetops, they could be anywhere, right? This is a great one because it allows me to fish it and call the fish to the bait. So 
I can use it on a calm day and I could fish it in deeper water. I mean, I've had fish come up 30, 40 feet of water and absolutely crush this thing. It's also a bait that's loud enough and easy enough to walk that I can fish it on a windy day. I can fish it through, you know, rollers or and some noisier conditions and fish are still going to find this. Now, as far as taking this thing out of the package, just a quick word of caution. You can roll if you don't really care about landing fish, then leave the hooks that are on there. But if you care about your land ratio, change these hooks. Okay, just switch them up to whatever treble hook you guys like. I like the owner ST 35s or 36s, but whatever you guys like is fine. This bait also doesn't come with a split ring. Okay, most anglers in Japan, which is a Japanese company, are attaching this with a snap. So whether you use a snap or you use a split ring, you want some kind of pivot point on here. Okay, I'm a bigger fan of split rings than I am snap, so I always put a split ring on the front, but you want this bait to be able to pivot and swing. It will help the walk exponentially, right? If you try to walk this just straight to the bait, it's gonna walk, but you're gonna find it's much harder to do it, right? So make sure you give it a pivot point. So for me, this is just a natural starting point, right? It's big enough to where it's gonna have a presence, it's gonna create a great silhouette, it's loud enough they're gonna find it. It's everything that I want a walking bait to be. I can throw it and I can walk it and not really pay any attention to it while I'm scouring, you know, looking for birds or looking for bait action. I know that if I twitch my rod tip that this thing is gonna easily move side to side, right? Now, the Diamante, similar shape, totally different action and totally different sound. Okay, so if you listen to this guy, it's full of small little glass beads and lead beads that are just creating a real high pitch sound, right? So the sound difference is extremely noticeable. You got this low pitch thump with just a little bit of that high pitch glass. And then here, you've got just a super high pitch, you know, lots of little BBs and rattles inside there making noise, right? So gone is that real loud knocking sound and in is that kind of higher pitch sound. I find that this sound is better when the fish are super keyed in on chasing bait, right? So when they're just in an extreme boil and they're just popping things, I don't think it matters. I think you get it in there and you make it look anything lifelike and they crush it. But when they're kind of in that in-between zone, like let's say they're wolf packs of fish and they're chasing little pods of bait, whether it's shad or herring or whatever, and they're boop, 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 right? You get these little pops and then they're gone and they're swimming around, they're looking for more bait. And then over here, it's like and then they're gone, right? That's when this bait seems to really trigger those fish. There's something about that higher pitch rattle that imitates more the sound of what a shad or a bait fish that's kind of escaping is gonna make, right? When those fish are really aggressively trying to escape and flee for their lives, all those backbones and, and, and the movement of the fish, you're, you're getting the creaks of you know, their spine and their, and their bones kind of clacking together. All that's creating sound underwater, especially when they're in pods. So if you get 50, 60, 100 little shad or herring or whatever, and they're all swimming aggressively, all those backbones together are kind of creating this little high pitched kind of clack. So it's mimicking more the sound of what the fish are hearing. Now, this is a much harder bait to get to move side to side than this one is. So you notice on this one that the eye tie is basically right at the front of the bait, right? So when you pull it, right, it's following super easily that movement and that pull. You'll notice on this one, that the line tie is underneath the bait right so you have to really be on top of your movements here it takes a little bit more energy you've got to kind of give it a little harder jerk than you would any of the other topwater baits and that harder jerk is going to really kind of pull it and pop it and it kind of pulls it under the water as it turns right so as it's doing that you're going to get this kind of pop sound too so you have this high and then you have this kind of like pop pop, pop as it goes. You know, notice once you get the cadence down with the Diamante, you're gonna have these bubble trails, right? And you'll have like a 40 foot, 50 foot bubble trail. It's 
it's cool. I don't know if the bubbles do anything. I don't know if bass look up and they're like, oh, bubbles, right? And they're like, oh, there's food, right? But you'll know when you're doing it right because you'll see the bubble trail going. It's really more the sound and that pop as it dives down is creating that is creating a bubble and it's leaving it behind, right? So you really have to be on your timing on this. You have to work it a little harder. You have to give it a little bit more energy, but I find that when they're super keyed in on small groups of bait, this one is dope. I also find that when you're fishing shallower water, especially if it's like a grassed in area and you don't want to be too intrusive, like sometimes this can be a lot. Like this is a noisy bait and sometimes it's too much and it freaks them out, right? This gives you more of a popper type sound. So you're gonna get that pop, pop, that boom, 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 boom. And it's a little less intrusive, but you could still work a big bait, a three quarter ounce bait, something that has you know some, some, some substantial size to it in that shallower zone uh, where they might be a little bit more freaked out. Okay, so I would say for me, you know, probably 80% of the time, this is my go-to. Because most of the time I go to like, I'm not really sure exactly what's gonna happen. Every day is different, it's a different adventure, right? So this just lets me kind of cover water quickly and fish different zones. But when I know that they're, you know, keyed in on this or they're laying up in this, then this is a great one. It's just a great one to kind of pick it apart for those certain times, right? Now, I should also mention, that the other dope thing about the kick knocker is that they also make it in a pup size, okay? So sometimes they want this sound, but they need a downsized offering. They are getting picky on the size of the bait. So you can go to a kick knocker pup, and you basically drop down to a half ounce size, but you get a much smaller bait, a much better representation of smaller bait, which is great, because I can get the same sound, I can fish it the same way, but in a smaller offering, Right now, the Diamante doesn't have a smaller offering, so it's just kind of a one size fits all. This bait is good to go out of the package, by the way, so it comes with a split ring. The treble hooks on there are good to go. I never change them. I fish them how they are. They're super sharp and they seem to hold up. So that's it. That's my, that's my breakdown. There's when I throw the kick knocker. That's when I throw the Diamante. They both are excellent tools. For me, this is just more of a general use and this is more of a specific use tool. All right, let's stay on top water for a minute because again, it is it is season, it's the time that everybody is throwing top water and another top water bait that gets compared all the time is this guy. The Gunfish from Lucky Craft and the Shower Blows from Evergreen. So both pencil popper style baits, they look very similar, they have that same kind of cupped mouth. When am I throwing this? When am I throwing that? You hear us talk about both of these baits a lot. They're both always in our arsenal. I'm gonna break down the differences here for you and why I throw which one. Here we go. So this is the Gunfish 115 and this is the Shower Blows 125, okay? So what that's referring to is the millimeters of how long they are. So this is 115 millimeters, this is 125 millimeters. These are the two that are compared to each other most often. This is our best selling size in each of these, okay? now. Basically what a pencil popper is, is essentially a walking bait, similar to what we just talked about, but with more of a cupped mouth. So it's kind of got more of a popper style mouth to it versus more of a cigar shape, right? So they're designed to give you a pop while it kind of moves, right? So it's a walking bait that also kind of pops, okay? Now, you will notice that the shape of these baits is almost in reverse to each other. So with the gunfish, it's gonna start wide and it's gonna taper down. And with the shower blows, it's gonna start narrow and it's gonna get fatter as it goes down. Can you see that? So that's gonna give the baits two very different actions. There's also very different sounds in here. So the gunfish, it's gonna be more of a traditional rattle. You've got some lead, you've got some tungsten, you have some glass. So you've got a little bit of a knock and you've got some high pitch in there too. The shower blows, if I can not hook myself, there we go. It's gonna have more of that single knock hollow sound similar to a kick knocker, right? So two very different sounds. This one is gonna be a louder, more distinct one knock sound. This is going to be kind of a variety of sounds and things happening, right? Here's the biggest thing. 
when I'm choosing between these two, this guy, the Lucky Craft Gunfish, is more of a faster fish, right? It is a walking bait first and a popping bait second, okay? So this is something that I can throw and I can move very fast. The way this is designed is I can fish this thing super quick, really tight, and make fast movements. If they're really aggressive, so you know, as the water temp is high, if they're really keyed in on bait, uh, if they're if you're seeing them chasing like one shad at a time or one bluegill at a time or you know something like that, this can be a great imitator because it can move really fast, gives them the sound, gives them the look but it's something that I can really aggressively fish, cover water really fast and give them a quick look. The shower blows can be fished that way, but really where it shines is it shines as a slower moving walking bait, right? So because it's shaped kind of more bulbous back here, it's designed to when it moves, it's designed to slide, right? That back end kind of slides on itself. Right, so it moves left and that back end kind of turns and then it moves again and it turns. So this is a bait that you're gonna walk and you're gonna, but it's not gonna go very far, right? Because that back end is turning on itself. So it's a bait that has movement, but it stays in the strike zone for a much longer time than a gunfish, right? So when am I choosing one over the other? Well, if I'm just running bank, if I'm covering a lot of ground, I just want to fish really quick, the gunfish makes way more sense because I can fish it much faster, right? You would absolutely drive yourself insane trying to cover a lot of ground with a shower blows because it just, it doesn't move far distance wise, even though it's moving really fast side to side. So for me, the shower blows is more of a pick it apart area. Right? So if I don't know where they are, I'm just covering a lot of ground trying to figure out where the fish are, gunfish. If I know they're in this little area and they're gonna be around this grass, they're gonna be down this specific, this specific dock by these big trees, then the gunfish is a great option because I can fish it and I can really pick it apart and keep it moving but in the strike zone for a longer period of time. It just allows the fish to see it and just chilling on their head instead of just quickly moving past. Right? So that's kind of how I dictate to myself when to use one over the other. The other thing about the shower blows is it comes in four different sizes. So the shower blows has a 125, it has a 105, so it's kind of like a pup size. It even has a tiny 777, right? So a really small one. And it even has a bigger size, it has a big 150 size. So there's four different sizes in the line that allow you to really kind of match the type of prey uh, or the type of presentation that you want to give. On the gunfish side, they used to have many, many options, but some of the sizes have gone away and uh, are a thing of the past. So now you have basically a 115 and a 95, okay? So I typically use the 95. When I really need to downsize and they get picky, I use the 115 as my daily user. Now they also have, just to confuse it more, a Gunfish 117, right? Now, the Gunfish 117 is, I wish they didn't call it a Gunfish because it gets complicated here, but it's a completely different shape than the Gunfish 95. You'll notice it looks much more like a shower blows. So the Gunfish 117, a shower blows, now they're sharing the same body, right? So thin in the head, bulbous in the back end, loud one knock, right? So this is gonna be more of a shower blows option, more of a slower moving option. I will choose the 117 over a shower blows when I want the bait to sit much flatter. So for me, this is more of like a super spook type alternative where it kind of skims on the surface flatter, whereas the shower blow is gonna have a little bit more of aggressive up and down motion. So it's just some options. Also coloring could be a critical thing. So maybe you need a transparent bluegill color and there's not an option here, right? Whereas you could get an option here, right? So 
that could be you know your deciding factor. But for me, if I'm choosing this style bait, I almost always go to the shower blows. I've been throwing it for ages. And there's so many different sizes that I can really fine tune and match whatever it is that I need to match. So there you go. There is the difference for me when I'm throwing the shower blows versus when I'm throwing the gunfish. All right, and then finally for today, we're gonna to talk about a soft plastic that we talk about all the time, right? And now there's some, there's some competition, right? And it's kind of a crazy competition because, you know, this has kind of been the bait on the market and then this is kind of the new player in the game, right? So this is the OSP Dolive Live Beaver. We talk about it all the time. This is the bottom up bull's hog, okay? So, let me take these out. Okay, so here you have the Dolive Live Beaver. Now, this has been our number one selling bait in the shop for the last couple years by just pure numbers, right? It's everybody's go-to free rig bait around here. It's a great jig trailer. So many things you can do with this thing, right? Now, you'll notice what really kind of makes the Dolive Live Beaver obvious that it's a Dolive Live Beaver are these appendages on the back end. And when you compare it to the bottom up bull's hog, you'll notice that the appendages are rather similar, right? So which one's better? Why am I throwing this one or am I throwing this one, right? So let's break it down really quick so it makes sense for you guys. So Dole Life Beaver is intended to have two actions. Okay, first thing you're gonna notice, it's a little bit wider, more of a traditional beaver style body for taking like an EWG style hook. Okay, so it's got a little groove on the bottom. It's got a little kind of hook pocket on the top. So you can free rig this, you can Texas rig this, you can fish it more on a weedless presentation. The appendages, you'll notice it gets very, very thin at the head right here, okay? So it's almost easier to see on the bottom side. You see how it gets really thin and kind of grooved. The idea behind this is that it allows this bait to collapse on itself. See how much that bait folds almost perfectly? What that does is as this bait is getting pulled through the water, right? So as the weight's pulling it down, these appendages are kicking like this as it swims through the water, right? So it's creating this, what they call a dolphin style kick. So you're getting this great kind of kicking motion as it falls, right? So as it's getting pulled, it has this swimming motion of a dolphin. As it stops getting pulled, okay? So let's say the weight separates. Let's say you're throwing on a free rig, okay? As it first starts falling and that weight's kind of pulling down the line, it's gonna have this kick, right? As the weight lands on the bottom and then there's nothing else pulling this, it changes from the swim to a perfect horizontal posture, okay? And then it falls horizontally just like a Senko would fall, okay? It gives this bait an unbelievably realistic crawfish movement. Right? I don't think there's a single bait in the store that mimics a natural crawfish movement like this. It doesn't look as realistic as you know some other like perfectly looking realistic craws, but when we're talking about movement, we're talking about motion, this one imitates it better than anything I've ever seen. Right? And you get the two-in-one combo. You get that swimming motion and you get that beautiful kind of horizontal fall, like a crawdad kind of you know, scurrying away, when they scurry, they kind of have that little kind of kick to them. And then when they fall, they fall just kind of horizontal and they just kind of chill, right? And that's the exact motion that you're gonna get out of the beaver. Now, when we compare that to a bull's hog daddy, or a bull's hog, you're gonna notice that it's a much thinner body profile than the beaver, okay? So it's more of a worm shape, okay? It's also going to have a little underside pocket. It's gonna have this little top piece. It even has this little bulb to kind of protect your hook point, okay? For a rigging weedless, again, free rig, Texas rig, something like that. This guy has many appendages on the side. So you've got these little mini claws. You've got a bunch of legs going both directions, right? They're gonna create little vibrations. But the appendages, right, are kind of jointed in the middle, right? So you notice it doesn't quite have that same kind of perfectly flop there on the head, and that's because it's not designed to dolphin kick down. Instead, they put the kind of bend in the appendage joint up front 
so that as this is swimming, instead of it having this up and down, you know, vertical kick, it's going to have a side to side, more horizontal kick. So bottom up is studied movements of fish and different things under the water. And you know, their, their mindset is that very rarely does anything in nature, right? Especially when you're imitating like a fish or something, they very rarely swim like this, right? Like you don't see bluegills just like chilling, like bouncing, right? They're always swimming horizontal, right? It's always a horizontal movement. But when you look across the lines of soft plastics and baits, most baits are designed to have kind of this up and down motion. They wanted to create a soft plastic that mimicked that side to side movement, right? So this guy is gonna have a different kick. It's gonna have a different swim that's gonna be more side to side. So as this is getting pulled, it's going to have a horizontal swim with these appendages. And then as it stops and the weight separates, then it's going to have more of a, again, kind of a horizontal fall. You're gonna have more appendages to kind of quiver on the way down. So a little bit more action on the fall, a little less intrusive action on the actual swim, right? So you're basically just changing the look, right? This guy is gonna go up and down and dolphin kick, and this guy is gonna go side to side and move. Now, when am I using one over the other? Well, I've just had so much success with the OSP Dolive Beaver that it's almost always my starting point. I just have so much confidence and ease of use and they almost always seem to eat this guy just fine. When I'm adding this into my arsenal, I find that this guy actually works better when I'm more aggressively pulling it. So if I'm fishing it quicker along the bottom with maybe a little less separation, right? Then I like this one because it has more of that horizontal kind of kick right along the bottom. It also works great as a jig trailer if I'm moving my jig really fast, right? So if I'm, if I'm kind of hopping my jig, right? And I want that jig to kind of go up and down. I like this as a trailer because it adds that kind of distinct kind of flap to the jig. But if I'm kind of dragging the jig along the bottom, I'm fishing it more right on the bottom, that's where this kind of has a little bit of a downside because it needs some kind of aggressive pull to get those flappers to really move. Whereas the bottom up, when you just kind of drag that jig, these appendages are always moving. So it's adding that jig, that little kind of horizontal kick as it's dragging, super, super effective, right? So super small nuances here, right? We're, we're really dissecting the movement, but that's what a lot of this is about, right? Is creating something that's just gonna move differently, it's gonna act differently, and that's when I'm fishing it. So free rig, this is always my starting point. Now, if you guys are just jacking them on this, like let's say you've got a school and you've just been jacking them and all of a sudden they lay off, you could probably switch to this and get a few more bites. This is gonna be a very similar profile, right? A lot of the same colors, but a slightly different movement. You're probably gonna extend your bite period. On a jig, I'm using this as a trailer when I want something super aggressive and hoppy and kind of a lift and drop. But anytime I'm dragging a jig, this one is absolute money. As a dragging trailer, it's probably one of the best trailers in the shop for just kind of dragging along the bottom because it just gives that really subtle lifelike movement that nothing else in here really does. All right, guys, that is a wrap. That is a deep dive into four baits that are always compared to other baits. I hope that was useful. So a little look into the nonsense mind of the hookup tackle around here. If you guys have any questions, anything that we covered, drop it down below and I will definitely get to them and help you guys out. I would love to hear your experience as well with these baits. So if you have experience comparing, you know, any of the baits that we talked about, please share below because I want the community as a whole to be able to grow and learn from each other. Jeff, thank you for joining. I know you've been very quiet, but I can just see your head exploding from all the amazing knowledge. As always, Master Sensei, tackle the talk some. You are welcome, my friend. So guys, on behalf of myself and Jeff and Griff and everybody here at the Hookup Tackle, Thank you for your business. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching, and we will see you soon on the next one. Peace out, guys.